I introduced the concept of state machine in the last lecture. Any digital system can be modeled as a state machine because unless it is a pure combination logic, the circuit of the system resides in several states and the behavior of the system is defined by a state graph or a state diagram which, which gives all the possible states in which the circuit can reside and the conditions for transition from one system to one state to another state. And a state machine need not be very complex, a very simple counter, a counter is a state machine. So, uh, we want to really know how to model the given problem as a state machine, then of course, to see how to implement it, how to design it and build it. So, we will see several examples as I said. So, in order to start our uh, dis, uh, discussion, we will start with a familiar circuit, we will start with a counter. I will I'll, we'll, uh, represent a counter as a state machine. So, far we are not given that type of uh, interpretation. To us, a counter is a series of flip flops connected in certain particular way, so that it can count up or count down or count from one one particular count to another terminal count and all that. Same thing can be now gotten using a state machine model. So, I will call this a counter, counter design. using state graph. What I can do in this counter is to make a change a deviation from what we have been seeing so far. I can have an arbitrary sequence of counts. A counter normally you assume that is count up or count down step wise up counter you start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 etcetera and down counter you start with a particular number go down. For example, you can start with 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 back to 7. What I mean by arbitrary counter, an arbitrary sequence counter, Let us have states which are not sequential in nature. For example, I can have a count of a 1 followed by 4 followed by 3 followed by 5, 2 and 6 and back to 1. This is an arbitrary sequence, this is what I mean by arbitrary sequence. Now, that means, if you represent it binary, it is going to be 0, 0, 1, then 1, 0, 0, then 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 and back to this. So, we are not having states. 0 and 7 are not there. It is a state machine, is a, so it does not have to be sequential. All you have to know is the sequence in which the states have to appear. Each we saw in the last lecture, a state is defined as the condition of a circuit at a particular clock period. During a particular clock period, the circuit remains in a particular state with flip flops having different values and from there it goes to the next state in the next clock period. Where it goes depends on the present state of the flip flops as well as the external inputs. Is that what we said last time? So, a circuit can remain in many states 
which are nothing but conditions of flip flops, because flip flops are the ones who store the state information, flip flops are the, the ones which store the condition of the circuit. So, from a given set of conditions of flip flop to another set of conditions of flip flop you have to go, the transition will depend on the present state and the input to the flip flops or the external inputs, then it decides next states. So, if you think of that as a state machine, this also is a state machine. That means, there are how many flip flops, the only binary I have written, how many flip flops are required for this? Each state has 3 bits, each state has a 3 bits, there are 3 variables which change from 0 to 1 all the time. So, let me call this flip flops A, B, C are 3, this A, B, C are called the state variables, I said, I mentioned this yesterday in the last lecture. I need and A is the output of a flip flop, B is the output of another flip flop, C is the output of a third flip flop. And these three flip flops are remain in the state 0, 0, 1 and then it go to 0, state 1, 0, 0, then it goes to, then they go to state 1, 0, 1, 1, etcetera, they go to state 1, 1, 0 and finally, back to 0, 0, 1. So, I can represent the state graph easily and it is a trivial case of an, no external input, only the clock steers this. Every clock period we are assuming the flip flops will go from one state to the next state. So, I gave you different models of the state diagram or a, or a, or a system in which there can be external inputs, there need not be external inputs in which only the clock triggers. The clock transition triggers the state transition, the clock transition triggers the state transition and the state transition will depend on the present state and the external inputs. The external inputs are not there, the state transition will depend on the previous states that is all, nothing else. Similarly, we can have an output which is different from the state in which the circuit resides or the outputs or the state information itself can be used as a output as in the case of a counter. Counter we know what count it is, that is what we want, the counter what is the output of a counter what is the count current particular count, what is the current count, if that is the output of a counter. So, no external output. The counter is a case of a state machine in which there are no external inputs, no external outputs. On the other hand, I can have a count also with an external input like up or down. Suppose, I want the count to go up, what should be, what it should, what, what should it be like and if I have a, if an input is present, it is up, present, input is absent, it is uh, down. This also can be used as an extra input if you want to. In this case, a simple counter in which no external input. So, the clock is the triggering mechanism, the states, the counter flip flops change from state to state to state based on the transition at the time of the transition of the clock. So, we have a state machine model, state graph in which there will be 6 states. So, I will call this state 0, S 0, S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4, S 5. They keep changing without any external input that means, every clock period or every clock uh, transition there is going to be a stress transition. For the first clock period it will be in S 0, next clock period the circuit will be in S 1, the next clock period the circuit will be in S 2 and so forth and each of these S's are represented by the state variables. So, I will put the state variables outside the these are the values of the variables a, b, c and c state variables. So, how is the circuit going to look like? The circuit is going to look like this, 
the model of the circuit is going to look like this. We have three flip flops called A, B and C. The current set of the flip flops A, B and C are fed into the inputs of the circuit. A next state is defined for a given state A, B, C, the next state is defined. So, that will decide the present state will decide what the next state should be. But in order to distinguish between these two variables, I will just put a plus sign, that is not mean anything. The same variable after the, the present state of these variables, next state of these variables, next a plus b plus c plus represent the next value of a b c. So, plus is given as a sort of a notation and that will be stored in the flip flops. Let us use simple d flip flops and outputs q that will be fed back as this. And there is no external inputs, no external output for this circuit. And these flip flops take the present state values are presented once the present present state values of the present state variables are presented to the circuit, it will come up with the next state value. The next state value will be available here, which will become the next state not immediately, but only after the next clock transition. At the next clock transition, these values become the, the present state. Now, it is this logic here, these are the input values of the present states and the output values are the next state values. The next state values will be taken in by these flip flops, stored in these flip flops and presented back to this, so that the states after that can be decided. So, this is the flip flops which have to be clocked. And this as I said is a pure combination logic. This combination logic has to be designed such that once this input is given, this becomes the output. If this input is given, this should be the output. If this input is given, this should be the output. This input is given, this should be the output. This input is given, this should be the output. This input is given, this should be the output. If you decide the combination logic that way, then the present state values as soon as they are presented here, the next state values will appear, the next state values will stay there. When the clock transition occurs, the next state values are stored in the flip flops and become the present state at that time. The next state becomes present state at the end of the, at the next clock transition and that present state values will be represented here. That will be used by the combination logic to decide the values for the state after that. That will become the next state for that and so forth. So, this is a counter design is arbitrary counter design is nothing but a simple combination logic design, where if I give this value this should be the output, if I give this value this should be the output, if I give this value this should be the output, if I give this value this output so forth. So, what is going to be the the combination logic is a logic in which there is no flip flops or anything as I said the inputs decide the output and the inputs are this a b c outputs are a plus b plus c plus even though the variable is called a I will call them a plus b plus c plus to distinguish between these two sets of variables otherwise you will get confused totally. So, this a plus b plus c plus become a b c at the next clock transition. 
So, what is the description of a combination logic? The combination logic will give take as inputs A B C output A plus B plus C plus and I can always design the circuits using the map method, we know map method. So, but only thing we will not write it in this order because it is if you want to use map method to simplify this combination logic, I would like to have it in a natural binary sequence. So, I will write all possible values of A B C and then write the next values corresponding to that. Instead of saying 0 0 1 to start with and then 1 0 0 then it will get confused. You know, when, I, when I try to draw the map again I will have to sort of uh, fumble around. In order to avoid that I will put them in the sequence and write the next values from this given state graph. So, all the possible percentage values some of them may not even exist for example, 0 0 1 does 0 0 0 does not exist. If 0 0 0 occurs, what is the next state? 0 0 0 is not one of the required states. So, 0 0 0 will not occur in this counter. So, next states will be do not care. Similarly, 1 1 1 occurs again it is not defined, next state will be do not care. For all other values of this present states, the next states are defined. So, if the present state is 0 0 1, what is the next state? 1 0 0. Present state is 0 1 0, the next state is what? 1 1 0. Present state is 0 1 1, the next state is 1 0 1. Present state is 1 0 0, the next state is 0 1 1. Present state is 1 0 1, the next state is 0 1 0. Present state is 1 1 0, uh, the next state is 0 0 1. This is a state graph this is a state table that is all. Have I done anything different from here? Whatever information I put in this form of a graph figure diagram has been converted in the form of a table. So, this is called a state table. So, instead of combination logic truth table, this is a truth table of the combination logic. also known as the state table here in this case, because this table tells you the present states and the corresponding next states that is all right, which is what the state graph gives you. If there is an external input I will have to put that external input, if the present state is there and x is 0 what will happen, the present state is there and x is 1 what will happen I would say. So, if you have inputs also in addition to the present state variables here, if there are external inputs that also can be accommodated in this we are putting one more column for each of the inputs. If there has been an x, then I put an x as an extra column in this truth table, then I will say the present state is this and x is 0, the next state will be this. If the present state is this and x is this, this will be the next state I will write. And similarly, there is an output in addition to the state outputs, there is an external output, I can also incorporate it here on the outside output of this output side. Suppose this z was an output in this state this should give an output of this, in this state it will give an output of this, that also I can accommodate. Your state table is a generalized truth table, truth table input output relationship it involves the present state and the next state and if you have external inputs I can also include them, if you have external outputs I can also include them. So, present states 
information and the input information is the left hand side of this table. Next state information and output information they form the left hand side of the uh, right hand side of the truth table. Uh, such a generalized table is called the state table. A state map, a state map or a state graph is translated into a state table. From here to long combination logic is easy, we know that, right. So, I will have to draw for each one of these A plus B plus C plus a corner map in which A, B, C will be inputs. I can simplify the map and find out what is the combination logic look like, right. So, I can draw the map here itself in a space. So, I give A, B, C this is A plus map then I will have the B plus map. So, A plus can be read from this map B plus map I can have a C plus map I can read C plus from this map. So, I can read A plus, I can read B plus, I can read C plus and then I have what is required inside this box. Then my counter design is completed. So, this is a generalized approach for a design. I can use a binary count also se sequential binary instead of this can I not do that? That does not matter. It is an arbitrary sequence. I can have a natural sequence also does not matter. So, this is a generalized design concept I am giving you. Now, <coughs> what is this now? First column is this A plus map. So, this is do not care 1 1 1 0 0 0 do not care which is very easy. What is this A plus equal to? A bar. Good. B plus map zero one zero one one zero don't care. That is going to be this and this. You will have to include as many do not cares as possible to reduce the map. I find in your quiz answers, answers in the exam questions, some of you have not used the do not cares to the maximum possible extent. Use do not cares to the maximum possible extent to reduce the hardware complexity. So, for example, this one and this do not care can be combined instead of reading this as, as a separate prime implicant. So, what is this? This is A B bar A bar C bar. Okay. C plus map is here 0 do not care do not care 1. 1 1 ok do not care 0 0 1 1 0 1 do not care again this these are the two prime applicants 
Pardon? That is A A C bar and this is B C. So, I have my A plus as A bar B plus as A B bar plus A bar C bar C plus as B C plus A C bar and where are these ABCs? These ABCs are the same variables here, not any external inputs. These are the state variables which are given as input to the next state determination. Present state variables have to be given as inputs so that next state can be determined by the combination logic. So, the combination logic will be A bar, advantage is A bar, B bar, C bar are available because these are flip flops. So, you have A bar also. So, there is no need for inverters because flip flops have q and q bar outputs. So, that means I can put uh, directly connect my flip flop D D A plus or D A D A the input of the flip flop A plus which is nothing but this A bar. And the second thing will be A B bar A bar C bar. Both are available A, B, A, A bar, B, B bar, C, C bar are available. So, all these four variables are available. Combine them in an R gate, thus may become my B plus, which is given to the second flip flop B. A plus or D A, D B. Likewise, I have B C A C bar give me D C C plus or D C same as D C which is the D of this flip flop and this will give C C bar. So, I need to write it such that So, if we give my A, B, C, A bar, B bar, C bar as input to this combination logic. So, this is the combination logic block we are discussing here. And these are the three flip flops we are discussing here. This is the clock.
So, this is my combinational logic block which is shown here. This block is shown here the same as this. So, it contain, contains say what how many gates 4 AND gates and 2 R gates all 2 inputs and then I get a b a, a a bar b b bar c c bar as inputs to this of course, I have not shown that here only shown a b c you can also get a bar b bar c bar also inside this. So, a a bar b b bar c c bar which are available here are taken as inputs folded and taken as inputs and then you generate d a d b d c which will drive this d flip flops to the next state after at the next clock transition. This combination logic is also called the steering logic. Why is it called steering logic is obvious. This logic steers this flip flops from state to state. So, a counter is a generalized example of a state machine It can have a computer, I can have a washing machine. I can have a traffic light controller, I can have an elevator controller, I can have a level liquid level indicator, whatever. What are the states, what are the inputs and what sequence and what inputs, what sequence the state should go to and at, at with at and with what inputs. You write this state table, convert this into a state table, uh, I mean state graph, convert into a state table, use combination logic that is familiar to us and drive those flip flops, they steer those flip flops using the combination logic from going from state to state to state. If the sequence counter is a natural sequence instead of an arbitrary sequence, I can do the same thing, but we do not have to do that because we know that the clock can be fed in is a uh, reduced solution. So, we do not have to go through this, but you can also get the same solution using this approach. So, suppose I need to use for some reason, are there any questions as of now with this concept of state machine design. See the whole thing is falling in place, the combination logic, sequence logic reading them independently as each is a chapter to be forgotten when you go to the next chapter of the book. The whole thing is one grand thing is all used in a total goal of system design. System design. You have no questions? Yes, you can have, but it is that means when that count it has to remain in the same state. Uh, from here you can have one more count 0 0 0 you can have we would rather use it as an external input. Of course, uh, we can always do that let us say 1 0 0 you want to count twice you can put 1 0 0 to 1 0 0. But then when you draw the card number we do not know which 1 0 0 you are talking about. So, you know, instead of doing that you can have an external input defined when x is 0 it remains there and x is 1 x is 0 it remains there. So, you can put x is equal 0 here all others x is equal 1. So, from s 0 to s 1 it will remain both 0 and 1 it will take here from here it will take here only if s is 1 x is 1 if x is 0 to remain here. So, you can external input can be used more elegantly for that design. Occasionally for some reason we may want to use flip flops other than d flip flops because we know several other flip flops. We know j k flip flops, we know d flip flops, we know s r flip flops, we get t flip flops. Suppose I say I want use j k flip flops instead of d same problem 
choose JK flip flops. The D flip flop has the advantage Q plus is same as D, Q plus is same as D. That is the next state value or the output is same as the input. Give the input and clock it, it will become the next state value, right. So, D flip flop has advantage. So, I could directly use this as a D input, A plus next state information is same as the D input. J k flip flop the next state depends on two inputs j and k. So, I may have to modify the circuit if I wanted to use j k flip flops instead of d flip flops here. So, you can have a a bar that is q and q bar j and k j and k j and k q q bar q q bar b b bar and all of them clocked the same clock source now the combination logic should determine if I am in a present state a b c given by any of these values the next step I have to determine based on this table. So, what input to j and k here in the d flip flop case, what input to d will make it as the next state this. So, for example, we thought about a flip flop, a flip flop is present state value 0, next state value is 1. So, I need to make d is equal to 1, next state becomes 1. The next state of the d flip flop has to be 0, I have to make d is equal to 0. So, every clock period. I have to change the value of d as per this table because next state value is the same as the d input in a d flip flop. Not so in a j k flip flop. j k flip flop the output determined decided by both j and k values. If next state has to be 1, present state is 0, next state has to be 1, we want j is equal to 1, k is equal to 0. If the next state has to be 0, I have to make j is equal to 0, k is equal to 1. Since I need this type of things, I need j input k input, j input k input for each of them. So, I need j a j b, j a j b j c, k a k b k c. So, j next state value will be k a j b k b j c k c. Of course, I have to give ABC as inputs. So, we have seen that not only we need ABC, we have seen that ABC as well as A bar, B bar, C bar are also required. So, if you want to combine the drawing because without making it too cluttered, I can draw it C C bar, C C plus. C bar value, C value, I do not want to show this, it becomes so A bar, A A bar, B B bar. So, I, I can try it as So, I am not showing the in between values, assume that all of them are drawn. Avoid the overcrowding of this drawing. You can imagine that B bar is counted here, B is counted here, A bar is counted here. So, normally we show only A B C. 
Even though Yebar Bibar Sibar is also used, they are also used. Normally, in the state graph, uh, the state uh, uh, this model, generalized model of the uh, system design, we give only A, B, C as the inputs, even though you know that A bar, B bar, C bar is also required. Now, the question is then if on the present set A is equal to 0, 0, 1, and the next set is 1, 0, 0, what should be the value of J and what should be the value of K? If the present set value of 0 for A, next set value of A has to be 1. So, I need to give j is equal to 1, k is equal to 0 for this. So, this has to be expanded, this table has to be expanded to include a plus b plus c plus not directly the inputs now, a plus b plus c plus where the inputs in the case of d flip flops because q plus is same as d whatever is the present value of d that becomes the next state value of the flip flop output in the case of d flip flop alone. In the case of j k flip flop the next state value has will be determined by j and k. So, what should be the value of j a and k a? What should be the value of j b and k b? And what should be the value of j c and k c? In order to make the change from 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 1, from 0, 0, 1 to 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 to 0, 1, 1, so forth, of course, 0, 0 state does not occur, do not care. So, I have to fill these values. properly in order to go from state to state. Steer the flip flops, j k flip flop from a set of values a b c, the set of values a plus b plus c plus next state I need to have a proper combination logic. So, the combination logic will be having 6 outputs j a k a j b k b j c k c for the present state inputs a b c and a, a bar b bar c bar. So, the logic will be going to be different that logic will be determined by the truth table or the what is it called state table in which we will have to say what input of j a and what and k a will make a go from 0 to 0 from 0 to 0 0 to 0 what input of b will make it from going from this to this etcetera etcetera we will have to uh, no no from yeah like that we have to do. So, for that I need to know, so far we know only the behavior of the flip flops, it is called analysis, the characteristic table we called it. For example, I said the tables of So far we know the behavior of j k flow for example, take j and k and in q. We know j 0 j k q is memory we will call it 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 q bar is it not? So, you want to call this q n plus 1, this is q n or you want to call it q plus, this is q bar is q plus. Memory can be written as q, the value is same, the next state value is same as the present state value is q. This is the characteristic table, the behavior table. But you want a reverse table. If the present value of is 1 and the next value all, all has to be 1, what should be the value of j and k? So, I need 4 transitions. The present state can be 0, next state can be 0. Present, present state can be 1 and ne, uh, present state can be 0, next state can be 1. Present state can be 1 and next state can be 0. Present state can be 1 and next state can be 1. So, 4 possible transitions are there are 4 possible transitions. 
for each transition what should be the value of j and what should be the value of k. Such a table is a complementary table or a, I will not call it inverse table. I have to derive the table from the characteristic table such a table is called an excitation table. This is the characteristic table. of j k flip flop. In order to make it more explicit what I am going to do is instead of making q and q bar etcetera which are I am going to say the present set is 0 0 q is 0 next set is also 0. This is an expansion of the characteristic table. Earlier I put memory, toggle and things like that have been removed and put explicitly. There are only two values possible for everything. Q can only take a 0 or a 1. So, if the present value of Q is 0, next value of Q is 1 in the toggle mode. The present set value of Q is 1, the next set value is 0 for toggle mode. For memory, if the present set is 0, next set is also 0. Present set is 1, next set is also 1. So, that is an expanded characteristic table. Instead of putting memory state and toggle state, I have expanded it. If the inputs are 0, 0 and the previous output was 0, next output is also 0. Input is 0, 0, the previous output is 1, next output is also, oh, I am sorry, this is 1 memory. You are all watching without telling me. Present set is 0, 0, it is a memory, the input is. Now, if the present set is 0, 1, next state is 0, irrespective of what the q was. If the inputs are 1, 0, the next state is 1 irrespective of what the previous output was. And j and k are 1, 1 is a toggle mode. If the circuit is in state 1, 0, it will go to state 0, uh, state 0, it will go to state 1. This is called From this table, I have to derive what is known as an excitation table, in which I will have to say if the value of q is 0 and it has to go to 0, what should be j and what should be k? If it is 0, it has to go to 1, what should be j and what should be k? If it is 1 and it has to go to 0, what should be j and k? 1 and 1, what should be? So, what are the values of j and k for each possible transition of q from the q can be 0, it has to remain 0, q is 0, it has to become 1, if q is 1, it has to go to 0. 1 it has to remain 1. Each condition and uh, for each case what should be the value of j and k? Such a table is an uh, sort of an inverse table of the transition. This can be derived from this excitation table, you can look at this and do this and that table is required for me to fill this because here I have to say if the present set is 0, 0, 1, the next state has to be 1, 0, 0. That means flip flop a has to go from 0 to 1. What should be j a and k a? If the flip flop is b is 0, next it also has to be 0. So, what should be value of j b and k b for the flip flop to remain 0? Flip flop is c is 1 and it has to go to 0 for the next state. What should be value of j, j c and k c for this to become 1, 1 to 0 transition? So, first I make the excitation table and then use that excitation table to fill those values of j a k a, j b k b, j c k c for each of the transitions given in this diagram. Then we have the combination logic for j a, j b, j c, k a, k b, k c by corner maps and then make this diagram of the steering logic. We will proceed with this in the next lecture.